Boom. And we are live. Matt, how's it going, okay? Good. How's it going? It's going good, man. Sorry for the lateness, everybody, when you guys jump in. <coughs> excuse me, jump in here. And Matt, you know, I was fixing some stuff up, but I'm all set. I'm all ready. And the movie that we are reviewing is, as you can see behind me, Intruder. Fun fucking movie in a grocery store. The whole movie's in a grocery store. Who would have thought that could work? And there was no tape, uh, toilet paper shortage either. That we know of. <laughs> they did show toilet paper in the movie. Mm-hmm. They did show some amazing fucking kills in this movie, though. Awesome fucking kills. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> like, wow with some of these kills, man. I just started over again. I have it, like, on mute, just watching as we're going through it. This I say that has to be probably my favorite, <clears throat> one of my favorite non slasher, non franchised slashers out there. So it's I, a standalone slasher by itself, mm-hmm. and I had so much fun with this one. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm with you on that. Like I'd say, not only non, not only non franchised as far as like you know a big series, but not a big name. Like I I've never heard of this movie. I just went through Tubi. As a matter of fact, I googled. Um, I believe I Googled like slasher movies on Tubi and this was one of the ones that popped up. I was like, I've never heard of this. The cover looks fucking awesome. I got to see this. <laughs> Simple as that. And then after, after I watched, I think the day after or the night that I was watching the movie, right once I finished, I think I texted you. I was like, Hey man, have you ever seen Intruder? We got to do a podcast. I don't, you're like, I, yeah, I fucking love that movie. And I should have fucking known you seen this. I should have <laughs> fucking known, man. But this movie is fucking great. It's it's awesome. You know who directed this, right? It just popped up on the screen. I probably just missed it. Sam Raimi. Oh, damn. That, it, great job. That's why Ted's in it and Bruce Campbell's in it. <clears throat> this was based on a, a short story that they wanted to work on that they did a, a college project. Really? And decided to actually make it into a full-length movie. Really? Mm-hmm. Nice. I think it was called, originally it was called Dark Intruder. I think it was. <clears throat> but this time they actually got around, they actually had the budget, and they wanted to do it in the grocery store. Great freaking choice. Great freaking, like, it's just, it seems like it shouldn't work because, again, it's just in one little small location. But, boy... <laughs> Boy, it freaking works, man. It works so well. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when did you, like, how long ago did you first see this movie? Was it years ago or? Mm, I'm trying to remember when the Blu ray came out. I had it on DVD a while back. It was a, uh, <clears throat> a bad copy. I think Full Moon put out the old DVD. And I've had this for quite some time and I upgraded to the. I think it was Synapse released the Blu-ray, and of course the Blu-ray looks beautiful, has mm-hmm. a lot of special features to it, and uh, yeah, quite some time I've owned this film, plus ten years more. <laughs> Does your wife like it? Yes, she's seen it twice. Nice, nice. Mine actually didn't mind this one. Like she, she likes. The uh, she likes slashers not as much as I do, but she was like, you know what? This is she's like out of all the cheesy slashers you've picked recently, this was pretty good. I don't know if she. It's different them. too because it doesn't take place in a uh, in the in a uh, forest. It doesn't take place in a summer camp. That's where true. Where a lot of your slashers take place now, uh, they're not in the woods. They're not like in a house yeah. or in a apartment complex. It's a grocery store. It's like a small little mini mart. It's like, how cool is that? And it, yeah, and the thing, like I said, it really worked. And uh, it was a fun movie. And I like how, you know, you're, you're going through the movie, you're watching it, and you think you know who the killer is at first. You think it's the typical, you know, the, the boyfriend, the ex boyfriend, whatever the hell he is. And it's not. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, this. <laughs> it was just so 
but again, going back to the kills, it was, that's what really a uh, fucking amazed me, man. Like, if you've ever worked in re- put it this way, people. Anybody who's ever worked in retail, watch this movie. These kills, you will greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate. And I'm sure with some of these rude ass customers, it's crossed your. I'm not saying you're gonna do it, but you're just like, man. It just crossed. I just wanted to do it this one time because this motherfucker da 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 da. This was the movie that showed. Well, you. just think also too. You're in a grocery store. What do you have available to do the killing? Not just like you know knives or meat cleavers. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> There's other devices out there that are pretty brutal. Like if you ever worked in a grocery store or in retail, the box flattener machine. Oh yes. There you go. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was wow. That yep. kill there <laughs> it may <laughs> excuse me. Like I'm again I'm rewatching. I should have just go- YouTube like the kills in this movie. But that kill there was definitely it might have been my favorite kill in the movie and if I were to do like a top 10 kill list or whatever, not for all across the board cuz that's too much, but say like a top 10 kill list for maybe lesser known movies, this would definitely be one. Mm -hmm. This might even be number one because that kill was just like, holy fucking shit. Uh, Mine would be the one where the one, I'm not saying who it is because it, that surprised me the first time I watched this movie, you think one of the survivors is going to happen, but Mm -hmm. then he gets killed, but it's a, uh, one of those uh, standing saws. That's where you would cut meat or cut wood. They were cutting ribs and bones. And his face just went right across the saw. So you'd see it going through like the teeth and halfway through the face. And he's screaming through and it rips his whole head off pretty much. That was but it's through like the top part of his head. Yeah. I was like, wow. Now we're going. <laughs> that surprised the hell out of me. And it, the thing is, is it looked, I mean, it looked good, especially for its time. It looked really good the way they did these kills in this movie. Mm-hmm. You gotta love the practical effects. And this one's got a lot of practical effects to it. And they're brilliant. They are brilliant because this is one of those things too, man. Like if this movie was made nowadays, they would CG just imagine all those kills CGI'd up. They would fucking Oh, it'd look awful. It would they would butcher it. They would butcher it. Mm-hmm. So what um, what possessed you? I mean, you probably don't remember. Like, <coughs> what made you get this movie? Like, are you are you one of those people like you go out and buy just random horror movies that you're like, oh, I've never heard of this. Let me get it. No, so actually, actually, after a bunch of eighty slashers, and I wanted to get more because I wanted to get my, at the time my collection when it was small, I was missing out on a bunch of eighty slashers. I loved eighty slashers, mm-hmm. and I was going through going. Well, I need to grab Intruder. <clears throat> I need to grab Curtains. I need to grab, like, I thought there was another one I wanted to pick up. And so I grabbed Intruder and I grabbed Curtains as well. And after watching both, I'm like, where the fuck was I when I had these? <laughs> I needed them. They were awesome. <laughs> curtains. You got to let me know about that one. That's another awesome 80s uh, slasher film. It's weird, and uh, but it works. I got to see that. I got to see that. There are a bunch of girls that were brought to this rich man's house because he is a, like a director and he's looking for his new lead role. And Mm -hmm. each, each girl has different abilities. One can sing, one can dance. One's like a stand-up comic. One's an actress. There's a whole bunch of them. So they're in this remote location. And of course it's a wintry setting. Uh, They get snowed in. But someone's going around wearing this old witch, like old lady mask that's going around picking these girls off and other people in this house. <laughs> when you, the, the ice skating scene, <laughs> that's a great scene. So I got to watch. Yeah. My I wife's gotta... nodding at me. She's like, yep, because we watched that one together. And <laughs> uh, it takes place during, it's not, she's an ice skater. So she's out ice skating and it's daylight. She's got the radio going. And all of a sudden, the radio stops, and there's this old, weird-ass woman staring at her and starts chasing after her on ice skates with a giant, like, ice, uh, a sickle, the mm. curved weapon. 
just running out, skating after her on this mask and everything. Ugh. Yeah, it's brutal. Brutal. I heard her in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's fucking. I oh, I gotta see that. <clears throat> oh, I, I even I even found a book, and uh, you know I'm not a big reader, but this book I had to own. It's a slasher book. It's all different slashers from like the beginning of slashers, like 1960s, with either Psycho or Peeping Tom. People mm-hmm. kind of go back and forth all the way up to the present, and they talk about all different films that are slashers. <clears throat> they talk about Giallo's, 80s slashers, 90s, and to present. And going through this, going, wow, I don't know some of these. So I had to go, of course, pick them up. That's awesome. Uh, now, I'll show, once I find the, find the book, I'll send you a picture. I highly recommend it. If you're a huge slasher fan, I, yeah. own this book. This book is fucking awesome. I need that link so we could post it in the group later because I know I'm not the only slasher fan. Yep. When you get, you know, when you get a chance, you don't got to worry about it right now. But that, oh, I know exactly where it is. I just got to dig it out. Fucking beautiful. That just sounds amazing. Like just going through that, like oh my god. Does it have pictures too, or is it more just? Yes, like... some pictures on some films, but it has like little excerpts, like little read parts on certain movies. Okay. And uh, they'll tell you the name of the movie, the date that the movie came out, and a little synopsis of it. Some will have pictures, some will not, and it goes <laughs> through the whole decade: eighties, decades, seventies, nineties, and early two thousands. That's so freaking cool, man. And they talk about obscure ones to like pretty much the everyone knows slashers to really, really obscure ones. And of course, some that are not so good to some that are real good. <laughs> you I I need that. I just need, <laughs> simple as that. I need it. Yep. And I gotta see the movie curtains. It's in there. It's is that how you found book. Awesome. No, um, I follow a bunch of the websites to certain the people who release movies, like mm-hmm. Synapse, Scream Factory, Arrow, and all them. And at the time, they released Curtains, and I'm like, ooh, what is that? And I read about it. Of course, it's an 80s slasher. I'm like, oh, i got to buy it. Okay. That's one of the ones I'm definitely glad I bought. You had me at 80s slasher. Mm-hmm. You had me at 80s slasher. There's nothing like them, man. Like when Arrow just released uh, Edge of the Axe, that's in the book when I was reading about it. I'm like, oh, I want that's an obscure one. It was only out on bootleg, but it was on VHS, so it's a very rare, obscure film. Mm-hmm. Arrow finally puts it out on a special edition Blu ray. <clears throat> that was like a day one buy for me. Wow, and that's another. Oh, they're, they're, they, I've, I'm watching a YouTube video right now, and it has it's only like five, six minutes. All the kills from the movie of Intruder, and it mm-hmm. just did the uh, the cardboard crush kill. <laughs> but like I said, Bruce Campbell's in it. He's only in it for a cameo. He's not in it for the whole entire movie. Mm-mm. No, he's not. But he, you know it's him. Like when you see him. Yep. Because they were friends, and they said, "Well, I have all these parts taken." He's like, "But I want to put you in the movie." The Blu-ray actually has a lot of interviews with uh, both the Ramy brothers, with Bruce Campbell, the whole <clears throat> making of their original story that they made, how mm-hmm. they did it. So I definitely recommend buying the Blu-ray. It's got a lot of cool special features. <clears throat> and when they talk to him, they're like, well, I, I, I could throw you in the small bit part. And he's like, I don't care. We're friends. I had to put you in my movie because we did Evil Dead together. So mm-hmm. they did that. That's cool. That's real cool. What's, what kill is this? What kill is this? <laughs> oh, this, that's the, is this the Saw one? Yep. The one you were talking about with the saw? Mm-hmm. This one definitely has a good body count, too. Not like one or two people or three or four. It's a high, high body count. And you don't know who the killer is. They kind of edge towards one person mm-hmm. who was like a psycho ex-boyfriend. <clears throat> but there's a twist. <laughs> and when you read, when you hear about it and when you watch the movie on why this individual was doing it, it's like, oh, okay, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I like that, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, <laughs> excuse me. And I kind of, like, <clears throat> it was one of those ones that didn't hit me right away. But after, I kind of felt like it was going to be one of them. And I say that because 
I felt it was going to be the one. I might. I'm, this is a spoiler. <laughs> I felt like it was going to be the one owner that wanted to sell the shop because he wanted to have like all the profits. But I was wrong. Because mm-hmm. it would have made sense either. You know what I mean? It could have made sense of, you know, <clears throat> I want all the money. I want all the stuff for this. So I'm going to kill everybody. Or I don't. Actually, it kind of makes more sense if you really think about it. it <laughs> versus this shop is my life. You know, this store is my life. So I'm going to kill everybody. But <laughs> I don't know. Either way, it was cool. Oh, yes. I like a lot of the acting. The acting was really well done. Uh, again, the special effects were awesome. All the practical kills oh, yeah. were used. All the dummy deaths were great. Yeah. And I think I just love the setting. It's different. It's never been done before with a slasher in a grocery store. They've done it in like, you know, they did a couple in malls. So a grocery store is a lot different. There's other places to hide. You got the storage area in the back, got the coolers. Mm-hmm. So you have a large area to cover to pick people off. Not just like a Walmart where it's definitely huge, but it's a small little mini mart. Yeah, yeah. That's what it, that's exactly what it is. It's a small business, which we all mm-hmm. do support small businesses. <laughs> that's one way to throw that out there. But it was um this was actually a movie I can say I don't have many complaints for it about if any. Like I really feel like they did a really good job with this movie. The dialogue wasn't bad either. Like, you know, you watch some good slashes and there's too much dialogue in it. There wasn't really too much. that. Di- like, this is one of those movies, like, once it gets going, it just fucking goes. Mm-hmm. It just goes. And it's not one of those things, too. Like, you know, you know, you have the ones that once it gets going, it goes and it's over like that. You're like, holy shit, everything happened so fast. That was too quick. This is like a good kind of brutal. You get, they kind of get toyed with a little bit, not too, too much. And then boom. But it just it just flows so this it just flows so good, it really does. Mm-hmm. Makes me want a bag of chips and some soda. <laughs> but it's, oh, and the blood, like just everything, man. Like I, I, do you have any complaints about this movie? No, this movie is again one of my favorites. Um, <clears throat> non-franchise slashers, like that's just a standalone. Mm-hmm. This is like up in my top two. I could watch this one over and over again. Um, I enjoy it so much. I recommend this one a lot to a lot of people who have never, like, if they're into slashers, okay, I tell, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, blah, blah, blah. But they're, like, looking for, like, obscure ones or <clears throat> standalones. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to get Intruder. They're like, what's Intruder? Pretty much a slasher in a supermarket. What? Goes, <laughs> yeah, Pretty that's, much. That's and they're exactly like, whoa. Right. I go, I, I highly recommend it. <clears throat> Definitely said if you can get the Blu-ray, uh, buy the Blu-ray because it has all the cool special features to it, all the behind the scenes, interviews, especially if you're into, like, I'm a big Sam Raimi fan. Mm-hmm. I like a lot of his movies. I'm a big Bruce Campbell fan. So had a guy before them as well. When I met Ted Ramey, his brother, he's the one that, he's one of the characters in it. And we actually talked about Intruder more than we talked about Evil Dead. And, and how everything worked out. He was kind of surprised because everyone brings Evil Dead stuff or talks about Evil Dead or uh, Xena, Warrior Princess, a bunch of other stuff. I bring up Intruder. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Is it, this is, see, this is one of those movies, Matt, where, which I'd like to start doing this more often at cons, is getting something from the movie, either the Blu-ray, a poster or something, and bringing that to get signed versus that mm-hmm. big name movie. Because this is this right here is a gem. Yes, this is a definitely must own for uh, collectors. I say must own, must see. All like you have to see this movie, horror fans. It's on Tubi. Tubi's free. Hop your asses on out there. Download the app if you don't have it already. You just have to sign up with your email, but there's no no money at all. There's ads during the movie, so what? Little commercials, like 30 seconds, who cares? Mm-hmm. It's but free. You're going to get little watch. commercials here and there, but... And it's a fucking awesome movie. Like, it's... I don't even know what to say. Like, I, again, <laughs> I have no complaints about it. I <laughs> And I like... I'm one of those people, too. I don't... Like, I do enjoy watching, like, a shitty horror movie just so I can talk shit about it. 
Mm-hmm. But this, we could not talk shit about it at all. And I'm just, oh, man, it was so fucking good. Mm-hmm. So fucking good. Yeah, it all takes place at night because <clears throat> all these people are there. They were wondering, like, why are they at a grocery store? Well, they all work there. Mm-hmm. The grocery store is closing for good. So they're doing final stock, final prep and everything. Yeah. That's why everyone's there. And, of course, the doors are locked. Certain people get picked off to keep everybody there. It works. Yep. The movie's called Intruder. And you can go see it on uh, Tubi. Someone's asking in the group or in the chat. Oh, that's cool. One person so far, which is cool. Great freaking movie if you're a horror fan. It's a great slasher. Again, it's called Intruder. It's on this app called Tubi. Go on there. Whatever device you have that allows you to do it, it's free. Awesome. And they left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, I love it. They'll just pop in and out. Yeah, hey, I answered the question. Yep. Especially, like, say, if you're, since if you're quarantined, this is one of the great movies to watch during oh, quarantine. yes, it is. It Quarantine yourself up and just watch a bunch of slashers and listen to this podcast. That's all you need to do, people. That's all you need to do. Because I got some shit lined up. As a matter of fact, I might as well tell you right now, Matt, I have another show tonight, like I told you earlier. I have one tomorrow night with a cosplayer. Possibly two tomorrow. Okay. One Monday, and then I'm working on something for Tuesday and the rest of the week, <laughs> up and through the weekend and every because, you know, I got nothing else to do. Well, let me know what movies you're doing. Maybe I can help. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Whatever, whatever days you're free and you want to record, man, let me know. <laughs> well, I'm stuck at home for five days, so. Well, shit. <sighs> you did <laughs> tell me it's like 20 minutes ago. I did. I listening more. Um, well, let me know later on we'll discuss. unless you want to tell the movies now. Well, I'm doing, yeah, we'll discuss it after. We'll discuss, maybe okay. we can discuss it after, but I might, cool. if you're free for the after, after, Aaron, after, we'll, we'll wait, <laughs> but yeah, I got some, I got some stuff. Either that or mean you can also just do some other ones as well, but, um, shit, man, just the, the meat hook kill dude picks him up and hangs the dude on the meat hook. Mm-hmm. That was, you know what I do have? Okay, I have one one small gripe about this movie. This dude is strong as fuck, and like when you see his stature, he looks like somebody who's not that strong. Like he looks like he's in his maybe what forties or fifties, maybe. Mm-hmm. And he's like picking people up, like the, the well, people. When you're in rage and when you're pissed off, you get that like quick superhuman strength. He could probably pick some. That guy was pretty light. Picked him up, throw him on a beat hook, boom. He's man, like he's manhandling everybody. Oh yeah, there's that saw kill again. Oh, <laughs> that's such a good fucking kill. Holy shit! This movie has some of the best kills in a fucking slasher movie. I love the part too where they get <laughs> the one guy gets cut in half. He's hanging in a trash can, and there's a half off sale. <laughs> that was awesome. That. A cool what little killer that. pun. That's awesome. But yeah, I think overall, I'm not gonna say it has the best kills throughout the whole movie I've ever seen, but it's very consistent with good kills. Mm-hmm. It's not like you know, there's some movies where it has like a, it has like say three good kills. Say it has ten kills for the whole movie, but three of them are the only good ones. This one right here, I'll say the majority of the kills in this movie were the were great. And there might be some that were good at worst. But I'm just like, wow. Like, where did they come up with this idea to be in a grocery store? Where did they come up with this idea for these fucking amazing kills? And then the way it ended, too, was funny. Mm-hmm. How did you feel about the ending? It's good because it wasn't been done like that. A lot of the movies you see, the final girl grips away, and there you go. There's your ending. Uh, this one was definitely different. With uh, mm-hmm. the cops showing up, and mm-hmm. uh, it's like, oh, we're going this kind of route. Interesting. Okay. Oh, no. Go ahead and spoil it, Matt. You know, this is a spoiler podcast. The only way I don't spoil it is if it's an indie movie and they ask me not to, like, when we mm-hmm. have to review the one, or if it's in theaters, which I usually don't even touch just because of that reason. Oh, absolutely. I don't talk about movies that are in the theaters. But, yeah, the cops show up and arrest them. <laughs> arrest the girl. And uh, they think that they she did it. So 
maybe down the road, which we, I know we don't know for sure. There's proof that she couldn't do it, but just that showing up of arresting her was different. I liked it. She doesn't just mm-hmm. walk away where the building's on fire or got blown up or the killer's coming up for the final attack in front of him and the cop shooter. No, it's the cops show up. Oh, you're covered in blood. Guess what? You're getting arrested. Yeah. It was her and her ex, right? Because he survived yes. too. Yep. Which, because the funny thing was, though, is the reason why they got arrested, <coughs> the reason why they got arrested is because the main killer, they like took him out beat the hell out of him, cut him up, stabbed him. But he was still alive, like, when the cops came, and he was like, they did it. They killed everyone. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if he smiled or not or laughed a little bit, then he died. I'm like, really? I was like, that's really fucking different. I was not expecting that at all. And, I mean, and the the funny thing about it, too, was, like, he, they were just, like, trying to say, like, real, like, we didn't do this. He did it. But, you guys are the ones that are standing. <laughs> you yeah, guys are the ones that are standing. Because the boyfriend was beating him up, too, when the cops showed up. Yeah. And he got stabbed and everything. And after the fact, he's like, yep, they did it. They killed everyone inside. And, of course, he collapsed. Mm-hmm. And, of course, they're like, what? And then, boom, they're in cuffs. They can, they can haul the way. <laughs> that, that was such – that was – that. now, that right there was an ending I was not expecting at all. Like, a lot it's, of these horror movies, you expect so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I mean? You could not expect so much. I'll say it better. You like. You ex- a lot of your 80s horror slashers will have like a ha- some kind of happy ending or yes. to where a final girl lives or even the, the, the final girl dies, like everyone dies. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't expect it where the, pretty much the killer gets the last laugh where, okay, they get everybody putting the blame on you quick, boom. And all of a sudden you didn't expect them just to get arrested right then and there. Like, yep. Well, What's and, going on? <laughs> I think a lot of people might not like that ending because they all expect, you know, people to live or to, mm-hmm. but it's what happens. I I personally loved it. Like I, I really did just because it was something different. Oh man. Here I, 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 since we've been doing this video, Matt, I've been watching this kill scene over these kill scenes over and over and over on YouTube. And it's back to the head crusher with, the cardboard crusher, the head crushing mm-hmm. kill, cardboard crusher, such a fucking awesome kill! Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's just so like, oh, they did so freaking well with this, man! Oh man, I wonder what the budget was for this. I don't know. <clears throat> I really wonder what the budget was. Whatever it was, they did an amazing job, and the location was great too. It's not where like a lot of your supermarkets are in the middle of a giant parking lot. Mm-hmm. It's like this weird little small building that's, this is the supermarket and uh, <coughs> the location was great. Agreed. You know what it is though with that too, is it's like, <clears throat> it makes you think of like, a, um, again, you could say like a small business, like a mom and pop shop, but in like a small town that everybody knows where it is. That's just the shop everybody goes to. Yeah. And that's what it was. That's what the look they gave it. And it was, oh, man. It's not like a super center. So yeah, way yeah. before super centers were around was these little mom and pop uh, grocery stores. Mm-hmm. And it just looks like a, it looks like a side of a building pretty much with two doors sticking out. It does. But that's not. When you go inside, there's a giant supermarket. There's rows and rows of food and toys and Groceries and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Lobster in the back. Yep. The beer aisle. What did you? Hey, you okay, I got. I have another complaint. Maybe two. Definitely one. <laughs> the hand in the lobster tank. After he cut the guy with his hand off, he threw it in the lobster tank. I yep. was kind of hoping they would have like had the lobsters going at the hand, kind of eating because they're scavengers. That's one. Or at least oh, making man. it look like they ate it. Nah. That's, not, that's not a big one. My here's the one though that I wish happened. The olive scene. Remember the guys eating the jar, the jar of olives? Mm-hmm. I wish you would have grabbed the eyeball and ate it. <laughs> that would have been cool. Because he would have bit it, freaked out, spit it out, and then got killed like right after that. That would have been cool. So that is my real gripe. The, the olive. I like, and- I, I, like that, I like that. It gives like a sense of um, a little bit of a taste of fear where there's this eyeball sitting in there and you're just randomly grabbing olives and are they going to get it? Are they going to get it? Are they going to get Oh, but still that's, that's what great because someone got their eye chopped off, threw it in a jar of olives and 
It's just hanging there. No one knows about it. I I was real. Oh shit! Curtains is on YouTube. Oh shit, Matt. We might have to do <laughs> curtains next. I mean, you record again. I'll do curtains. Well, yep, it's on there. Hell yeah. So we're going to be doing curtains next when we record again. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, man. I hope that has some... Uh, that's the one with the ice skating kill? Yes. Okay, good. Perfect. I have to freaking see that. I it's have not, to It's that. not a uh, an awesome slasher, but it's still a good one. It's, it's not as good... It's, it's, so it's not up there with Intruder. No, it's not there with Intruder, but... It's still good. It's still uh, a memorable. Uh, I'm trying to think of what other words, but it's it's definitely a great '80s gem for sure. Oh, that works. That <clears throat> works. That, I love you know. I love these gems. I love this freaking movie. I just wish that. Uh, I wish I knew about it sooner. <laughs> I really <laughs> do, man. I'm just like, what the fuck? This is so awesome. How did I not see this? Why the hell did Matt not tell me about this? You never asked. <laughs> I can't ask a question I don't know to ask because I don't know about this. Tell me about some slashers and I'll give you a whole list. I guess I'm going to have to start doing that. I never even thought to like think of a slasher in a store. Like, I mean, in a grocery store. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, it all makes sense. Did you know there's a slasher movie with uh, Chuck Norris in it? Oh my gosh, I did not. <laughs> How is it though? It's good. What's it's it called, called? Si- Silent Rage. Silent Rage. Pretty much Chuck Norris versus a Frankenstein type uh, killer. I, I would watch it just because. But it, Chuck Norris is a cop, of course. He goes after this gentleman who is a ex murderer, gets busted, and of course, the killer is in a hospital. Left for dead, decide to experiment experiment on him to use like special like serums and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Something goes wrong. He wakes up. He's like invulnerable to certain pain. He can. He's got a little bit, a little bit of superhuman strength, a little bit through the serum. So he starts going on a killing rampage again. And of course, Chuck Norris has to go after him. <laughs> it was in my slasher book, which surprised me. Oh, I got I got to get this book. You know what? You know what? What you just said. The funny thing you just said is. Chuck Norris goes up against this guy. You said this gentleman who's an axe murderer. <laughs> like you referred to him as a good to the morning to you. <laughs> like he's this guy's so polite. He opens he opens the door for his wife. You know, he gave this homeless guy some twenty dollars. He killed <clears> that dude down the street with an axe though. And that guy. He's an axe. No, murderer. this guy's he'll break into people's houses and chop you up with an axe. Um, I think it's from the like the seventies. Seven. Late seventies, nice, nice. But it surprised me because I never knew about it until I read the. Well, I was going through the book and going, "What is this?" I thought it was just an action film, but it's actually it's one of the ones that can be misconstrued as a slasher or not. Mm-hmm. But after watching it, <clears throat> to me, it's a slasher. Okay, I I trust your word and definitely in the horror, the horror. I mean, I trust you more than that, but in the horror realm, <laughs> I know you know what you're talking about. I know you know what you're talking about, and I just can't get over this freaking how good this was in a fucking grocery store. <laughs> Holy shit! Like, why couldn't I see this when I was working at Target? Just to just just to talk about it at work, even. You know, Tubi wasn't out then, though. But still, if I would have had to buy a DVD, oh, I would have. If I would have known about it, or VHS of it, uh, it would have been a DVD at the time. If yeah. It was, yeah. There goes that. Oh, my goodness. Just, like, the way the head crunches when he's, the machine's going down. Uh, and the way the body's, like, shaking, the blood's just squirting, squirting out. It's, 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 it's epic, people. It's fucking mm-hmm. epic. You need to see this freaking movie. <clears throat> this is definitely on my highly recommended list. Oh, I just realized there's a hand in the fucking, um, you know, where you'd, like, put a like, stake in. What the hell do you call it? That thing? You know, mm-hmm. it's wrapped in plastic with the plastic on the bottom or styrofoam on the bottom. That one of those, they had a hand cut off wrapped in that before you hook, hang, hung the good up. Hung the guy up. Hung the good up. Hung the guy up on the hook. Yeah, there's a lot of cool supermarket type 
leftovers left around in this movie. Yeah, and I like that. <clears throat> I like that. I actually wish this. I wish this movie had like a bigger following. I wish it was more popular. Kind of. That that probably does. It probably has, it, it does definitely has a nice cool cult following. <clears throat> I know a lot of people who are collectors and whatnot will definitely know about this movie or or big into just 80 slashers. They would probably know more. But it definitely does have a cool cult following to it. Makes sense. You got a point there, though. You got a point there with that. Um, shit, I, I can't stop watching this for these fucking kills. <laughs> kills in this supermarket. I, I told you, this is a good one. You weren't lying. You weren't lying. I'm almost ready to rate this movie. I just don't, I have to, you know, I do the one to 10 rating. I try to think of something fun. Right. Like how many, uh, what would you give this movie? That's all I got to think of. Well, we're in a supermarket, so let's say how many... Wow. I'm trying to think will be the best one. Let's see. You're thinking. Because there's no, like, like how Ugly Sweater was an Ugly Sweater movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> how many kills in aisle 10 would you give this? Oh! <laughs> For miles one through ten, how many kills yep. you this movie? Ooh. Me, I, I give this one a ten out of ten. Oh, can you please say why a ten out of ten? <laughs> I <clears throat> love this movie. Uh, I love every bit of it. I have no complaints on it. Uh, the kills are great. It's multiple kills. Mm-hmm. There's, like I said, high body count. It's a, in a different location. No one ever think of. The ending is very obscure. And leaves you like, oh, that sucks, but it's still good. <laughs> uh, a lot of remarkable kills. Acting was great. So, again, 10 out of 10 for me. I've seen this movie, I don't know how many times. Um, I'm going to stop in at aisle 8 <clears throat> for this movie and give it an 8 out of 10 kills. Or, All right. You know, it, it, was, uh, it was fucking fantastic. It was amazing. And I just. I don't have many, com- like, my little complaints, I guess you could say. I'll throw it another one. There was no titties. Just because. Boobs, blood, gore, you know. You know how I am. But no, seriously, though, this movie was really fucking good. The kills were good. The torture scene was good. Like, when the um the one owner got his eye smashed on the, um, what the hell was that thing? It's like a postage note. Uh, holder? Holder thing. I know we, when I worked at the bank, we had one. And every time I would play with him, I'm going, man, that'd be kind of cool, like, you know, to hit someone with it or get <laughs> skewered by it. And, of course, multiple movies I've seen, people get poked right and the, with it. Right through the eyeball, though. That was fucking cool. Mm-hmm. That was really, really cool. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go up to aisle nine. I'm going to go to aisle <laughs> nine. Movie. Nice. And, again, you know what's crazy, too, is, as you know, I am a diehard Friday the 13th fan. Mm-hmm. I have not rated one of those movies a nine yet. I don't know if I wow. will or not, but it's just, it's a different type. Like they're both slashes, but it's like a different type. And you are, you already know how I rate movies. Like I don't rate them based on how good this movie was. Cause again, mm-hmm. I'll go back to my Jaws episode. I believe I gave Jaws either a nine or a 10. I know we gave the thing a 10 and I would watch movies like this. And you know what I mean? Over, or Friday the 13th, for example, over those nines and tens that I gave ratings to just because they're just, I'm entertained. I don't know. It's just weird. Also thing too, is there's no <clears throat> sequels to this movie. A lot of times when people make sequels, they kind of run out of ideas or it's the same thing over and over again. True. And it kind of denatures, devalues the original movie. Like the original Friday the 13th, fucking awesome movie big twist like no one thinks about and then of course we make part two great film Mm -hmm. you get into like three and four but also now you're getting into like part eight part nine (laughs) outer space you're like all right what are we doing now it's like the same with the saw movies when the first saw movie came out was great awesome how they planned everything Mm -hmm. now you're doing more and more and more you're kind of running ideas like oh it's the same thing here's another guy tortured by a buzzsaw or getting split apart like we've already seen it here we're not we're like i said we're in a supermarket 
We don't see that. Now, if they did another intruder, it would probably knock this down a little bit, maybe. Or the second movie would be like, oh, this is kind of stupid. They already did this. Yeah. People won't bother. Where this was just a standalone, nothing else. There's no continuation. There's no prequel. Boom. This is what you have. This is what you get. This actually might be one of those movies to where, like, um, let me think how to, how to word this. As far as, I don't think a sequel would work for this movie. No. Just because the type of movie it is, like, there's not, well, for one, the killer gets, he dies at the end, and then two, it's We like, don't know for sure, though. Because true. if they do a sequel, he could come back. You know what, Slashers, the, the killer could always come back in some form, way or another. But They're, I'm glad I'm, they never did a sequel. I'm just yeah. just leave it alone. Leave it a standalone. It's perfect the way it is. You say, you're right about that. I'll, okay, I'll say this. There was no, um, like, he didn't have any type of supernatural powers. You know what I mean? Right. This was just like a person that just pretty much went nuts, pissed off about the situation, and was just like, fuck it, I'm killing everybody. Mm-hmm. That's it. I'm killing you guys. Fuck all of you type of deal. And they can't really, I don't, a sequel just wouldn't work for this, in my opinion. Even if the guy does survive and they show you the guy survives, it's like, why would he start killing again? Is he going to just get another, you know what I mean? Is he going to go in on another story, be like a secret owner? And then once they, it, it just wouldn't work. I feel like this one was done so well. And I feel if they did a sequel, it would devalue it. So not this one, but the sequel would be devalued so much because I feel it would be, be one of those things that would be like a, a money grab mm-hmm. if they did a sequel. My question to you is though, how would you feel about a remake for this? I wouldn't want a, a remake. This no is remake one either. of those movies that's the way it is because, again, newer year, you could have different CGI kills, and the CGI will probably ruin it some more. Um, you don't have little mom and pop re- uh, shops as much. Like, oh. You have shop centers. You have your big supermarket centers like uh, Walmart. Hannaford, sh- Price Chopper. Sh- yep, yep. Okay, I got Those another one. Of things. I got another one for you then. Same question, remake, but let's say it's based in the 80s, based in this time frame, and all practical effects. Are you still saying no? I know you at least watched it about 17 times. Oh, definitely watch it. <laughs> but don't call it an intruder. Do it something different. Uh, because then you're all of a sudden you're going, wait, is this a remake? Is this a retelling? Okay. Uh, what are they? What are they trying to do here? If they want to do it, something similar to that, name it something completely different, and be like, "Oh, this is like Intruder," or "This is similar to the movie Intruder." Okay. Okay. But it's not it. Intruder. So that's. So, all right. I'm 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 with you on that. I'm with you on all of that, honestly. So what about like a um? I'm just gonna throw a title like Killer in the Grocery Store. Mm-hmm. Maybe a better title, but I'm just saying the like, Killer in the Supermarket, whatever. That would that would work for you. Say similar as far as like it's in a grocery. It's based. I would a- still watch it, but depending on how how well done it is. Okay. If it's just uh, <clears throat> oh, he goes after one person and there's no one in this grocery store. It's like, wait a minute, where's the rest of the employees? Yeah. If you just if you just like say if you go into Walmart, Walmart's open twenty four seven. But again, if it's a little mom and pop, you're gonna have say the girl goes in to grab. Uh, some milk or and butter paper. or something like weird like that, and of course the killer's in there, but he only he only goes after her. Where's everybody else? Where's your mm-hmm. manager? Where's your stocking crew? Where's this? If you <clears> gotta <throat> add more people to it, I agree. Then, whereas if the person went into the woods alone, okay, it can be at a, a woods alone. This could just be at a random side of the road. Mm-hmm. So you you gotta plan and storyline with this. So if yeah. you're going to do like a retelling of this movie, <clears throat> again, I wouldn't call it that. I would still watch it. And based on that, that's a hard one. Be like, well, if I like it, okay, good. I'll be like, hey, watch Intruder, then watch this. This will make a great back-to-back double feature. Ooh. But if it sucks, I'd be like, no, just stick with Intruder and you're good to go. Yep. Killer on aisle seven. Here's, the, here's, here's what I'm shooting out there for you guys. I was thinking Massacre in the Isles. <laughs> massacre in the Isles. That's nice, too. So, you have your killer, obviously. <clears throat> but instead of it being the owner, it's a disgruntled employee or a fired employee. Mm-hmm. Or you think it's one of those. 
maybe you think it's that employee that's really upset. Maybe you think it's that employee that was fired, but it's really the happiest employee there that's moving up. But he can't get to this spot. Who knows? Just throwing some ideas out there, people. Don't judge me for him. <laughs> but no, you could, do, you could do a whole bunch of different ways too with it. <clears throat> but again, don't call it an intruder. I agree. Because this one, the way intruder is, <clears throat> is it the intruder of the ex boyfriend coming in to intrude oh. on the Her. grocery store? Uh huh. Or is it basically, well, we're, we're closing our store for bigger businesses? Is the bigger business the intruder? Ooh. So that's what that's why this title alone is perfect because you don't know exactly well but, is it someone coming in being an intruder you know attacking mm-hmm. people in this grocery store so if you call it if they call it intruder again it sounds like a home invasion type movie it yeah. sounds like yeah. uh someone just i don't know like yeah, pretty much a home invasion this mm-hmm. one is not <clears throat> so no, not. i would say definitely rename it if they're going to do a whatever but don't do it similar to this movie leave this movie alone it's perfect the way it is and go for make a different one come up people it's hollywood you have ideas put it out there stop doing a lot of remakes <clears throat> so this movie got a 10 from you and a 9 from me <clears throat> it's definitely search 30 approved and i know it's you and your horror movies approved definitely yep would you Obviously, we would both recommend this movie to people. Obviously, we would both rewatch this movie. Would this be a movie? Say you have somebody, you have, we all have certain friends that just don't watch horror at all. Would mm-hmm. this be a horror movie that you'd introduce them to a slasher, though? I would probably wait a little bit because it's a little obscure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would definitely you know, introduce them to other type of slashers, then lead them into this. But if they if they already are a slasher fan and they never heard of it, this oh, is a, definitely like you got to check this one out like right now. <clears throat> but if it's a new person, I'm like eh, maybe they're like, well, I want to see something different. I hear all the time. I hear about people like at the babysitter in the woods mm-hmm. or the uh, the camp counselors. I want to see I want to see a movie I never seen before. What would you recommend for a first time? Hey, I got one in the supermarket. Yeah. They're like, what? Here we go. Let's pop it in. See, I'm, I would say, um, honestly, I would say I would, <clears throat> I think I would show them this first. And I would say that because it's like, they heard of the Jasons, they heard of the Freddy. Say they never watched them, right? They heard of the Jason, the Freddy, the Michaels, all that good stuff. And they're just like, I want to see something cool. I want to see a cool slasher. What, what's one movie you recommend? I think I'd recommend this one. And I'm sure my answer will change anytime I do a slasher, you know, a lesser known slasher but just because like i look at it like if you're inter- if you're introducing somebody into horror like, in general but let's just say the slasher thing if you're introducing if you introduce some people into like the big name stuff and they see that they see the glitz and glamour oh shit this is awesome and then you introduce them to this after which is intruder introduce i like that <laughs> you introduce them to this one after they might be like eh you know but you know this was cool but it didn't have this, 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 this. I'm like, well, it's two different types of movies. I mean, it could be like that, but then at the same time, my brain's going crazy, man. Because <laughs> at the same time, it's like, you can also say, well, they can also turn this movie on. Again, if it's somebody who doesn't appreciate horror like we do, and <clears throat> they could look at it and be like, oh, well, you know, I was going to check out horror. You introduced, it, introduced me to this movie, and it was just, eh, it didn't do it for me. But I'd still introduce them anyway. Mm-hmm. Just because, again, it's not the, it's not that big name movie that really like grabs you. It's just like, look, check this gem out. It's a fucking gem. Listen to it, watch it, enjoy it, pay attention to it. Put your stupid phone down. Get yourself some cool snacks, some fun snacks, and just enjoy this movie. Yep. You know what I? You know what'd be really cool is if um, I would love to meet this cast. I would really love to meet this cast, man. <laughs> Seriously, like I would definitely go to a uh, if they ever did a <clears throat> intruder reunion at a convention. I would go. I would so go. I would. Oh, definitely. I would definitely do. Oh. I know they done like my the original my bloody Valentine. There was a uh, reunion for one of those films at a con. Mm-hmm. There was other films they did reunions for. 
but for this movie, I would definitely go to reunion for this one. This will be cool to sit through, especially because I'm like I'm a I'm a Rami fan. I'm a Campbell fan. This movie is so much fun. I agree. I would sit there and be like, all right, just smiling, <laughs> just just enjoying it. I think when Ted was at Scarecon one year, people have brought up Intruder at a Q and A with him before. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was kind of cool. So a lot of people do know about this movie. Oh, Scarecon, Scarecon. I hope it, speaking of Scarecon, I really, really hope it comes back in October. You've seen the June one's not coming back. Right. Which I've never been to that one. Me neither. But I really, <clears throat> and Scarecon, I love the con. I have a great time every time I go. I think that con would do well. In my opinion, because I know it's tough going up against bigger cons, but I think that con would do very well if it just did one a year. Because they pretty much get this. For the most part, they get the same guests for both cons. Sometimes the June one gets a couple more guests that the October one doesn't get. I hate to say it, but the June one was getting better guests than us. And yeah. we just seemed like it was, we were just put to the side a little bit more, even though we're the area that started it all. But I think they took too much and did the two cons. Mm-hmm. If you just did one. You have enough time to plan for one. You have enough time to get other guests for one. Mm-hmm. Uh, get your location versus, well, now I got two areas to worry about. It, I think they bit a little more than they could chew on that. Now, if they just concentrate on one, which I hope they do, Me too. keep it in er- our area. <clears throat> yes. Our area doesn't have cons pretty much. Massachusetts has several. Unfortunately, they did lose uh, Rock and Shock. Rock and Shock's not coming back anymore. But I think they have some other ones down there. But mm-hmm. again, we don't have anything around here for that. No, we so don't. hopefully they stick around this area. It brings people to our area. It brings guests here to check yes. out. And then all of a sudden, you're having a great time. Exactly. Like with uh, When I went to my first Monster Mania, my wife and I, it was a good experience. But our the main problem we had was was too many people in one yeah. little small area it was <clears throat> it's these smaller I, cons are great because you can walk around you can talk to people more yeah. you're not stuck in this line waiting hours and i mean hours for a patient uh, for a uh, autograph celebrity uh when we went to saw uh what's your face uh christina ricci <clears throat> mm-hmm. it was for us we went on that friday night and it was it was like a little assembly line but the next day, we're glad we went. That Saturday, people were waiting eight hours to meet her. Wow. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? That's your whole con. That's the whole day. Okay, maybe we're gone just to see her. But still, eight hours? That's fucking stupid. That's, Within eight hours at Scaracon, I can get all my guests done. I can go all my shopping done, do several loops of the con, talk to so many people. And I still have shit to do, which is awesome. And... And with Scarecon, because you know the podcast panels. <laughs> yep, which is panels fun. and Q and As, which is fun to be like. It's one thing being in the crowd for those, but it's really it's a big difference being on the stage for that. And like, oh. <laughs> it was like we hit shit. The year that we did it was the first time I've ever done anything like that. Me too. And I had so I will never forget that. Because that was an awesome experience. Even our Q&A had a lot of people in the audience. Yes. We actually got the big main stage where some of the other Q&As were in smaller stages. Mm-hmm. We got the main stage and we got pretty much the main attraction, which was the Friday Part 7 reunion oh, oh, of those, of those, of those individuals. And <clears throat> it was, there was a bunch of us on stage, unfortunately, but we got mm-hmm. it done. And a lot of people had fun. with People asked questions. And uh, again, great experience. I will never forget going up on doing that. Um, I'm so glad that that you guys could have did that with. Well, for one, I will be. I will admit this. I was like, I don't know what the fuck to do when I go up here. Like when when they're telling me about the the, the uh, Q and A, like, okay, you're gonna be the moderator. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to do. I need help. <laughs> I, was like, I need help. And you helped me all weekend. And my Rob came and helped that saturday when he came because he came for a little bit he came that saturday and helped out i mean you were friday saturday sunday we were there i had so much freaking fun with that and on top of that like um yeah because we did the halloween <clears throat> q a too yeah. the uh the movies the and remake versus original that was in the uh that was in a smaller area 
Mm-hmm. But I feel every single um, thing we did, every single panel we did had a really good turnout and it had really good back and forth with the crowd, which I loved. Like, that's one thing I fed off of and I learned from it because I did it again this past time. And I was like, okay, boom, listen, here's how I'm going to do this. Everything now, when I do these panels from here on out, for the most part, especially if I'm moderating it, and especially like if say if it's say if it's just like me, you, and Henry up there, for example, and it's not like one where we have a celebrity up there. <clears throat> no matter what the conversation's about, it's gonna be pretty much freestyle back and forth with the crowd because it keeps people it keeps people in their seats, it keeps people coming in, it keeps people engaging. Versus yeah. just some us. of the people were shocked when we asked them questions. They're yeah. like, uh, "Wait, me?" I'm like, "Yeah, you're in the audience. We want to exactly. get everybody involved." <clears throat> exactly. Even kids, like the kids, were like, yes. "Yeah, come up and ask us some questions." Could, mm-hmm. Everybody involved, like we want it to be like that. We want it to be engaging. It's more fun, and it's like it's one of those things. Like both of us are podcasters. Like with my show, as you know, I have a lot of guests that come on, just fans of horror in general, do interviews, all that good stuff. My thing with that is, once people feel they're involved or know they're involved, they're more entertained by it. Same thing with the Q and A panels that we did. Same thing with all those panels. Like once they know that they're involved. And they see other people asking questions and we're answering questions and we're asking them questions and all that good stuff. Then you get more people raising their hands or coming up. Cause at first for the first few minutes of each panel <clears throat> until people recognize who we were, you know, besides the same people that were like coming to our panels, they will be like kind of shy. Like, Hey, what do you like? Like, oh, I like that. Or does anybody have any questions or want to say, but once we got it going, it was, it was fucking amazing, man. I cannot wait to do something like that again. I hope I just, it happens. <clears throat> me too. I just wish that, uh, what shit? I'm going to say it now while we're recording still. <clears throat> <laughs> With the panels, if I could make some suggestions, if again, this is if it comes back, I would say cut down on some of them and make more of them like a freestyle thing. I would say as far as like, uh, cause like they had like the podcasting moderators one. They had a couple of podcast ones like that, which is cool. But, I would but say, you got to get the guests involved because you got to have a bunch of panels. Yeah. If you just have one or two, people are just going to come in and be like, well, what else do I do? And mm-hmm. a lot of people are, are there just to get autographs or buy stuff and they leave. You want to have the panels because you want to have some interaction with guests yes. and celebs. Or just listen. They'd be like, oh, hey, I always wanted to do podcasting. Or I always wanted to learn about something. Let me go to this panel and learn about it yeah one year at a tur- at a casino at the casino <laughs> was uh, a twilight zone uh q a they mm-hmm. talked about the old twilight zone and there was a gentleman there i forgot he was a, a college professor and he talked about old twilight zones and working with rod serling and a bunch of the writing it was the most informative q a i ever went to it was awesome and those, the place was packed with a ton of people. Uh, there was one about, I went to a video game uh, c- convention. Mm-hmm. There was one about uh, YouTube and talking about podcasting and everything. I'm like, eh, I'll check that one out. Why not? And I listened to it. Some of it was very informative. So a lot of people like to go to these Q&As for information. They're mm-hmm. curious about it. What Maybe they want to get involved, but they don't know how to start it. So having all these Q&As doesn't have to be just with the celebs, but with other people is great because they can walk around and keep them there. That's the idea is to keep people there at the con. So excuse me, definitely keep those Q and A's there. Oh no, no, no. I I definitely want them to keep them there, but just change them up a little bit. Like, right. Make them more entertaining. And I think, I mean, part of it is the people who are doing the Q and A, but I think a big part of it is also what the Q and A is. Mm-hmm. I, I, know, I think another dope thing because you know how the October con, how it has the um, what the hell is it called? The film thing, the film festival. Yeah, a little film festival. My suggestion is for the film festival things for those movies that got selected for that film festival. Each of those should have a Q and A right before the movie, right before the panels, or our panel right before the movie. That's hard because they got to get those people involved in those movies there to do the Q and A. A lot of times you just play the movie, whereas if you have a Q and A for the film for those people, then they can actually talk about it versus, okay, we'll go up there and we'll, we all watch the same movie. And we're part of this Q and a for some random movie called, you know, werewolf hookers on ice. Who knows? Then all of a sudden we're watching this movie and the people are asking us questions. How will we know if you get the director there or, you know, cast and crew members, 
for hookers on ice, maybe they can actually say, well, this was my budget. This is what we had to work with. Well, this is that, work. <clears throat> that's what I mean. Well, it's like, <clears throat> get, get those people there. As many, even if you don't get right. one or two other people from get the a couple there. independent people there. That's uh, yeah. That's what I mean. Because I'm, I'm always not, trying to get Drew Marvick. I, I, you're familiar with him, right? Yeah. 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 He's that's an right. independent, uh, uh, horror guy and he did the movie pool party massacre which we did which, and i've been saying please get this guy here uh stuff like to meet him maybe he could show his movie and to do a q a after yes like and then boom that would be awesome like you know or, do a lot with your independent films or yeah that, <laughs> that's an even better idea do the q a after yeah the movie like that's what a lot of people they usually do at other big ones i went to a video game con and we watched the uh Angry video game nerd movie. <laughs> and they did the Q&A after the movie. Mm -hmm. It was great because he ex he talked about like what he went through. People asked a lot of questions on what they did. Mm -hmm. Those are awesome experiences. Even like with newer films, like let's say you have a uh, a reunion of uh, of Intruder. Play the movie for those people who haven't watched it. Mm -hmm. and then after that, there will be a big Q&A after the movie to talk about it. So those, if you want, they can bring the cast and crew out afterwards. But it's, it's kind of hard with those smaller cons because they have to break everything down in the time constituents of what they have. So I I agree, but I mean, because I know they still they still show the movies, right? Mm -hmm. And instead of having like, because there's a, let's put it this way: say there's like last this past October, I think being hanging around about ten different panels. So instead of having that many different panels, like say, let's just use Intruder because we're talking about the movie. Mm -hmm. Say they were just like, okay, so for <clears throat> Intruder, we have three guests from the movie. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to show Intruder right after we're going to do the panel. And then say for Pool Party Massacre, we have three guests from that movie. We're going to show this movie. But it, you know what I mean? Like say Friday they do Intruder. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, I mean, even if they did two movies at once, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be bad. You wouldn't be able to see. I mean, because you're not going to be able to see every panel anyway. Right. But you know how they have like the smaller rooms and stuff. So say they did two movies each day. So six movies at least. Mm -hmm. That's six panels of indie horror movies. And on top of that, it'll help the indie artists because <clears throat> they go there, they try to sell their movies and all that stuff anyway. You get to see that movie there live. You get to discuss it with them. That makes you want it more. Boom, go get it. Get that autograph. And <coughs> Oh, know. when we went to go see uh, <clears throat> Hatchet 4, we saw an uh, early screening of it okay. in Syracuse. And Adam Green was there and pretty much was, you watched the movie. He did a big Q and a afterwards and then he did autographs. Nice. And there were, he did all free autographs. All his stuff was free and uh, it was awesome. Like people had, I, I should have brought more of my films, but I didn't know what he would do. So I just brought one movie. Mm -hmm. It's like, shit, I should have brought more, <laughs> but I could see like if a convention did that, do one movie, like a Friday night, a different movie Saturday night, and maybe one near Sunday or not do one on Sunday, but do a uh, Q and A after maybe a premiere of a film of a uh, an independent movie, oh, or yeah. <clears throat> say, hey, tonight's the premiere of um, Bigfoot versus Abominable Snowman. Revenge of the Grave. I don't know, something stupid. <clears throat> and we have the director. We have a couple of the cast crew here. We're going to talk about it. You've you've talked to them before. You met them before. Now here's their movie. Mm -hmm. Boom! Play the movie, then get people in, into it. It's kind of hard with older films because a lot of people have seen the older films. They don't really want to see it again because they want to meet the person and talk mm -hmm. for a little bit. But maybe just do a Q and A about it because <clears throat> that's what it's for. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <coughs> but some, excuse me too. But if it's a smaller con, maybe just play the movie. They do the Q and A after. Mm -hmm. That's knows? what I was saying with the um, with like the independent horror scene. It would help. It would help them a lot, and I feel it would just it would help the cons a lot because then you're getting more. Let's just use ScareCon for example, because then you're getting more indie people. Like, hey, I want to go to this con because there's a possibility they might show my movie. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, again, they could do. Because they, they have, like, four or five panels a day. So they could do at least two panels a day as far as the movies go. Because, again, you could do one. Let's say the con starts at 5 on Friday. So Friday would be one movie, maybe 6 o'clock. You'd do the panel right after. And, say, Saturday, you could, do, you could do a bunch of panels with the movies. 
You know what I mean? Remember, too, the movie is an, an hour plus long. So that takes a slot for other panels. But then you got to take that hour for hour and a half for the movie. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have the Q&A, which could be another hour, 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 hour. So that's two hours versus two different panels. So it's kind of hard on how they do it. I understand what they would do. <clears throat> I would say maybe just do one movie a Saturday night. Let's say before the big party that uh, – the big oh, party yeah. starts yeah. at 10. Do at 7 o'clock is the movie premiere of Sasquatch on Ice with lesbian Nazi hookers. And what all of a sudden. Thing, Matt? <laughs> Everything's on ice. <laughs> and hookers. And, ice and hookers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so therefore, boom. At 7 o'clock, this movie appears. Yeah. There will be a small Q&A uh, maybe before. So the actors and actresses can do their stuff mm-hmm. or do it after. Then, you know, give people have a break in between to say, okay, if you're coming to the party afterwards, boom, you have enough time versus people are very, oh, I got to get to this thing at this time, yeah. this time, and they feel rushed. You don't true, want people true. to feel rushed to go to certain areas. They have to go back to the room or go back home or to say, mm-hmm. no, I don't want to go to the party now. I'm too tired. I understand it's it's very hard to plan for that stuff in the show, but again, I would love to see that. I'd love to see the movie plus the Q and A after or before, depending on how they do it. So, uh, listen, JV, Alex, everybody else that runs Scarecon, and I'm gonna email you guys, you guys this. Oh no! <laughs> Just listen to the end. Well, no, listen to the whole episode. But listen, <coughs> Matt and I have some great ideas. We gotta iron them out more. For Scarecon in October because we wanted to come back. Doesn't even have to be in October. You can go in late September. Uh, at least they have something. I know in October a lot of other cons are happening. Yeah. Maybe not do October. Maybe do late September. Early. Yeah. At the end of at the end of September, like near the thirtieth or in the twenties, it still gives people enough time to do every what you need to do. You're still going to have the con. It doesn't mm-hmm. since it's a horror. It doesn't matter what month it is. It's True. a horror convention. True. All the cons don't all happen in October. Everything happens in all different months. True. This allows more vendors to show up because a lot of our vendors are planning for those October cons or they're planning for anything. So all, all of a sudden, uh, hey, here's this con in September 27th. Boom, this weekend. Vendors can plan like, oh, I can hit that one and the ones in October. Uh, other celebrities can hit that versus, well, I got to make this one in October. I got this mm-hmm. one in October. If you put it in a different month, it may give more people more time to yeah. for both con wise and for promoting to work. So hopefully, I don't know, it doesn't always have to be October. Let's maybe shoot for the end of September or hell, even early November. As long as we have a con, I'm happy. <laughs> That's what me I too. want. Me I just want too. a con. <laughs> I'm the same way. I just want an a awesome scare con again. So please bring that back. Please keep it going. And like I said, also, JV, Alex, and everybody else who runs this con, you already know I'll promote it on this podcast. I'm, I know Matt will help me promote it. So let's let's get the word out there. Let's get this con going. Let's make this con amazing again because it's freaking – I had such a blast. Every single time I go to this con, I have a great time, a great experience with the guests there, with the other fans there. It's just – it's fun, and it's even more – because I'm included now, like I said, I feel included now because I'm part of the quote unquote media with my podcast. So it's an extra bonus. It's, it makes me want to go there even more than I wanted to go there, which shit, I'd be there right now if I could. I'm sure you would too. Minus the Corona thing. Yeah. <laughs> corona at the con. That wouldn't be too fun. But uh, yeah, man, I guess we could wrap this one up. Okay. I do want to talk with you a little bit after, but. Plug your stuff, please. And everybody listen to the guy. He has some cool shit. Check his stuff out. And with his YouTube channel, I will say this. Once this video is out, once the YouTube video is out, you know you can like select what video you want to watch next. It's going to be connected to this channel. So, yes. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> okay, if you haven't, please check out uh, my YouTube channel, which is called You and Your Horror Movies. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more reviews. I got some movies to review. Uh, I do a lot of collection updates, show off some horror collectibles, uh, but pretty much a lot of horror movie related. Um, I'm also part of the Cinema Attack podcast, 
Uh, we're part of the Horror Affiliate Network. So if you want to check out Cinema Attack, where we attack all types of different types of cinema, but we do a lot of horror films. <clears throat> also, if you're on Instagram, you and your horror movies on Instagram, it's all one word. For some reason, Instagram does not like spaces. So you and your, Y-O-U-R, horror movies. Uh, I post a lot of pictures of films and everything. I'll be planning to do a review soon for some independent horror films. <clears throat> One is called Fear Footage 2. I did the first movie already, and I got to do the review for part two, which I fucking nice. loved. So definitely that. check that out. <clears throat> and uh, so, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. So please check out my stuff. Love to hear your thoughts. Yes, definitely go check out his stuff. This man knows a lot about horror movies. Like, he just – you heard us talk about horror for over an hour just now. And you're going to hear more hours of us discussing horror movies in the future, in the near, very near future. But, like, I, again, Intruder. Matt, have you heard of this movie? Yeah. The night I watched it, yeah, I, I fucking love this movie. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, I, 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 <laughs> my goal now is to find a horror movie that Matt has not heard of and has not seen yet. That's my goal. There's, there's, there's some out there. I know there is. There's probably, like, four. <laughs> no, there's a lot. But uh, I know I'm exaggerating a little bit. But no, what I'm saying is, it's like he really does have a huge, huge, huge passion for horror. And definitely go check out his YouTube channel. It's an awesome fucking channel. You and your horror movies. And he's a good, he's a good friend of mine. So you know, support it. Thank you. Yes, you're very welcome. On top of that, we game at night together, and one of us sometimes, uh, two of us, because my brother Henry also plays, is drinking some alcohol and smoking. And uh, our conversations make zero sense, but it's hilarious. So, yeah, come join us. <coughs> Listen to us game. Watch us game. Join us game if you have a PS4. I guess I'll do my quick plugs. Uh, I'll start with the PS4 because I just ended with that. So, my PSN is Sir underscore Sturdy. Um, <clears throat> my Twitch, Horror underscore with underscore Sir underscore Sturdy. I'm twitching as much as I can now with this whole crap going on. Uh, ooh. Nice one. Thank you. By the time this video comes out, this corona might be over, though. I have shit in the head of it. But uh, anyway, I did my PlayStation, I did my Twitch. Oh, Facebook group, Facebook page, Horror with Search 30. The page is just for the podcast as far as, like, news and all that good stuff, whatever we're watching, stuff like that. The group is for anybody and everybody to share anything and everything horror-related, including your own podcast, your own YouTube channel. That goes for you too, Matt. Just anything horror-related. You want to go out and buy something, you want to share it in the group, you want to share a funny meme, a funny picture, a cool picture, anything horror-related is welcome in the group. And again, thank you all for listening and watching, now watching, because you're going to be able to watch me now, this podcast, my YouTube channel, Horror Research 30. If you ever want to be a guest on this show, shoot me an email, horrorwithsir.sturdy. Again, it's horrorwithsir.sturdy at gmail.com. And we can work something out. It's going to happen. <clears throat> and I have a shit ton of openings next week. So let's see what happens. And as always, I'll see you.